first time I've ever worked with a gay community and transgender as well that closely. And so I think it really opened my eyes to specific struggles that they face, definitely in India, but I think a lot of the struggles are the same no matter where you go. And I want to be a clinician, so especially having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with them really opened my eyes. Like, I feel like I can be more empathetic now because I've experienced it firsthand. So, and then also um, I present, they asked me to present uh, one morning meeting and they uh, said maybe why don't you present some research that you've done before and uh, maybe when you're an undergraduate. So um, I was actually able to talk to them about um, some projects I had worked on as an undergraduate um, but in Spanish, you know, and so that was a big challenge for me, you know, getting used to the whole scientific language uh, in Spanish as well and so that was kind of thrilling to be able to, um, you know, communicate uh, my project in, in, a, in a different language and that was a first. Because my first family's time. from the southern part of Ghana and I've never seen a mud hut there. So that was really interesting to see that people actually live in mud huts and when it's night, it's dark, like everywhere. and. Um, I couldn't imagine. It was really funny because when I came back, Hurricane Irene had happened and we didn't have power where I was for two days. And I was like, wow, this is like I'm back in northern Ghana, which is so weird. But um, it was it was just sombering to, sombering to think that people move on with life, but life can be not as easy as it is here. So <laughs> it was a chance for me to get out there and explore a place I'd never been to and really get a first-hand view of, of healthcare in a developing country. And I think I'll definitely want to incorporate international experiences similar to that um, in my life in the future. And I think, just to add one more thing about that, um, China is right now just such a huge presence on the world stage. I think all eyes are looking at China at such It's really difficult to try to set up a research project um, from across the world, literally. It was a 12-hour time difference. and. Um, when you email with people across the world, people will say that they've got everything covered um, and that they'll do a favor for you. But when you get there, it's really all on you. And I'm sure a lot of people have similar experiences with the Downs Fellowship where you show up in that country and all of a sudden you are you really have the whole responsibility of getting all the things done that you thought were going to be and very easy. My done. very first day of training, they were all at least half an hour late and I had planned everything out and I was had been told by one of my coworkers at the NGO that they'd probably come late but I was like really kind of um, frustrated by that so fact and so I was definitely really scared the first time I went on a motorbike um, but I really had no option so um, it it was really it was just really exciting to immerse myself in the culture of northern uh, Ghana. I could talk for an hour about the culinary adventures. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had uh, congealed pork blood soup and snake and uh, yeah, I mean when they serve you a fish in Malaysia, it's not like a fillet of fish, it's a whole fish on the plate so you have to dig through the bones and um, yeah, you could see on my face.